<laughs> yeah. Again, math people were very creative. Um, does anyone remember what the type one error was? Or is currently looking at their notes. And the way I kind of remember that is the type one error is the shorter phrase. So what are the only two things we could do at the end of a, there's only two things that could possibly happen at the end of hypothesis test, right? You either reject it, reject, reject what? <laughs> reject the no. Or fail to reject the no, right? Now, you could be saying, what about support the ha? Well, that's if I say reject the null, I am saying support the ha at the same time. Those both mean the same thing. You guys go through. So there's only two things. We discussed all of it already. Type one is when I reject a true null. So one case is the null could be true. So when do I make a mistake if I reject it? Yeah, so one case could be the null is true. When would I make a mistake if I reject it when it's true? So that's why that's an error. The other case is if the null is false, when would I make a mistake? And see how that's a much longer sentence, right? Fail or phrase. Fail to reject a false ho. You always want to reject this ho. <laughs> yeah, so you understand. It's just. A little levity. All right. um, here's something I might have said very quickly at the end of the last class. Did I mention anything about how alpha connects with either of these guys? No. So watch this. Type one. Okay. So let's say we have a uh, situation. Let's say that we have uh, ho is mu equals one, uh, mu not equal to one, right? Detail test, right? So, what if the mean really is one? And let's say, uh, where is alpha on this picture? Where is it? If I was to shade it in, it'd be these areas here, right? So, this is going to be, sound a little weird, but basically the answer's already been given. But what area is in those two tails total? What? No. What area exactly is in those two tails? Alpha. Alpha. Pick S. Right? That's how they're defined, correct? Are you guys with me? So if I took a sample and the actual mean is 1, what's the chances I get out here? What'd you tell me? How much area is out here? What percentage is out here? You just told me. Alpha. Alpha. So what's the probability? That the mean really is one, but I get a sample way the shit out here. Okay, let me give it a specific. What if it's 0 0.01? What area is out here? Zero point. One percent. Are you with me? One percent. What is the probability that I get a sample and it shows up out here? One percent. Are you with me? It doesn't matter what alpha is. The the probability that I get a sample in the rejection region. Even if this guy is correct, is 1% chance. Do you understand? Let me try it again. If that really is the mean, if the mean really is 1, does everyone agree with me? There's 1% out here. So what's happening is either we just happen to do, if we get into the rejection region, either we just happen to randomly do something really unlikely or... The mean really is not one. Yeah? Why is it one percent? I just made it one percent I for a moment. Just because people didn't seem to get the alpha. But let's say if it was ninety. And if it's like ninety and then on the It'll side. never be ninety. Uh, so if this was point one oh, is that what you're saying? Right? Okay. Yeah. Then there would be ten percent out here and ninety percent inside, sure. But do you understand no matter what I make the number? Isn't there alpha out there? Whatever I make the number, that's what's out there, right? Yes? I thought alpha was on the edges. Totally. So oh, what's yeah, in the edges? Yeah. What's in here? Yeah. Alpha, alpha, like you just said. Two, right? No, in each, in each there's alpha over two. Yeah. How much total is out there? <coughs> alpha. There you go. Okay. So why did you write it in the middle at the top of the hill? 
I just put it there. I, I'm sorry. So, okay. Uh, here. Okay. All right. That's all right. Now it looks like a meteor shower. Um, it looks like hair. Weird. Okay. The probability that I made this mistake. So if we get out there, aren't we going to reject the null? What's the probability we're wrong? Alpha. Alpha. You with me? So alpha is the probability of making a type 1 error. There's something called beta, so, so it's not perfect. But if you do make this probability go up, this probability does go down, and vice versa. So watch this, real quick. Um, where's the other thing? Come here. There you go. What if I am in a nuclear power plant? I won a prize. Okay. What if I am in a nuclear power plant, and I'm in control? This is bad. I have all these gauges and such, right? Why am I looking at them? I'm looking for evidence of what? What's, what's the null hypothesis? Right, so, so what am I looking for evidence for if I'm looking at the gauges? I'm trying to see if something's wrong. I'm trying to find evidence for the po possibility that something's wrong. So the null is all is well. Is everybody with me? Because what you're looking for evidence for is that there's a problem. What would a type 1 error say? What would a type 1 error be? What's, what's in reality, what's true? All is well. Yes, in, re no. yeah. in reality, all is well. So reject a true no. In reality, all is well. But we think, but we think there's a problem. I'm just going to shorthand this sucker. What would a type 2 error be? In reality, what? So the null is false. In reality, there's a problem, because this guy's false. In reality, there's a problem, but we think. But we think all is well. Is everybody with me? Now, which error is the worst one to make? This is really obvious. There can't be any discussion about this. Which one is the worst one? Type 2. Type 2. Type 2. Oh, shit. What's the worst thing that happens with type 1? We walk around and we verify that everything's fine, right? Like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> what happens here? <laughs> Either machinery breaks down or the whole place blows up and we destroy an entire the eastern seaboard or something. I don't know where our nuclear power plant is situated. Are you guys sort of with me? Everybody really with me? Now, no, what's up? So, okay, so let's say you find out whether there is a problem or there isn't. When you write the conclusion. Oh, 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 you... oh, 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 no, all right. No. We wouldn't really run an entire hypothesis test because we'd actually go see the reality, right? And when I do a hypothesis test, I can't see the reality. That's the whole purpose. If I have access to the reality, all right, how do I say this? We run a hypothesis test on a population mean or percentage that we never can get. Does that make sense? But then how do you like explain how or in the problems you, like we explain as rejecting or we don't reject? You, you go based, do you reject what's not true? We, we go true? based off of what we see. It's all probability. There's always a chance we're wrong which some people look at as, what the hell's wrong with that shit? I took algebra, you always know x is whatever, you always know. I'm like, no you don't, sometimes there's no solution. But, but here, this is the most honest mathematics and that's why people don't like it. Because it just verifies life as uncertain, right? That's why I love it, it's like, here's the probability, here's the probability. So in this case, we're the humans. Alpha is the probability that I make a type one error. If I make that, if I let alpha get big, the probability of this one goes down. Are you guys with me? Which one is worse again? So I'm going to make alpha get big. I want the probability of this one to be high and this one to be low. If I make this probably higher, this probably goes lower. So really what I'm saying is 
here's where I expect things to be. I'm going to make my tails go way the shit in. I'm going to make alpha big as hell. So to that, if that little indicator, and again, I have a very simplified example of a nuclear power plant gauge in my head. There's a green, and then there's a yellow, and then there's a red. Are you with me? All right. So you watch it. If that sucker just starts to move towards the yellow, I am up. Right. I'm not going to go, well, this way. It's in yellow now, but you know, it's like way far away from the red. Don't worry about it. No, I'm off my ass. The minute that sucker's getting anywhere near the yellow, do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Hell yeah. Because you want to get, you want to be in front of whatever the hell's happening, right? The one reason I want to say this is to show you, have I told you what alpha is? Have I told you what they would say? No, it, it's all internalized. In, when you get to your field, you're going to have an idea of what enough evidence is, right? Depending on the situation. So in this case, you're just going to get up off your ass sooner than you would otherwise. Yeah. Are you saying the likelier uh, type 1 error is, the less likely it's type yes. 2? Yes. So they don't have a perfect, it's not like P and Q. They don't have a perfect relationship, but if one goes up, the other one does go down. Okay. okay. Not surprising, the other one's called beta, because it's the next letter in the alphabet. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so I just wanted to show you why alpha might change. So every problem you guys do, doesn't it seem like alpha is like constantly changing? Are you with me? 0.1, then it's 0.01, then it's 0.02, then it's 0.05. This explains why you want to make it different in different situations. Enough. Okay. All right. Um, so. Just real quick for the rest. Can yeah. you do 18 from the homework? Oh, yeah. So there are problems in the homework that have like a null hypothesis that is just numerical, right? So like mu equals 11, so you're like, in reality, mu is 11, but we think it's not 11, so that's kind of boring. This one is sort of, uh, oh, this one's a little evil. This is the old double negative in English, right? Uh, so the null hypothesis is the ship does not contain buried treasure. Are you with me? So what's the type 1 error? Is the null true or not with the type 1 error? True. It's true. So in reality, the ship for type 1 error. Does contain. No. What did, what did we just say? Reject the truth. So the null is true. And what's the null say? What's the null say? Everybody at home. What's the null say? <laughs> All right. Hopefully. Okay. Sorry. That was a little much. <laughs> what's the uh, null say? Sorry. Yeah, so if the null is true for type 1 error, in reality, the ship does not contain, because the H naught is true for type 1 error, right? In reality, the ship does not contain buried treasure, but we think it does. Okay, just keep going. That, that's all it takes for type 1 and type 2 error problems. Are you with me? Type 1, whatever the null is, that's true, but we think it ain't. Type 2, all the way around. Are you with me? And this is the first example where you can make an error, but it's not because you did any math wrong. It's just because stats is like, that's life, dude. We don't know much for sure. Yeah. So you start off with the type 2 by negating the code that they give you. Oh, type 2. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you could, yeah, always, okay. you could always say the HA is, is true. Right? If the, if the null is false, what's, what is it about the HA? It's true. It must be true, yeah. So for type 2, this is false. So what, what's in the type 2? In reality, the sunken ship does, does contain buried treasure, but we think, okay. all right, that, that's the that's it. That's it. That's all, right. cool. that's all it is. That's it. That one's a little tricky because they put the word not in the damn, you know, null. It's like, all right, just trying to be little jackasses, but, you know. 
Okay, maybe. Okay. All right, so the last kind of problem we have to look at is um, how do we do a hypothesis test about a percentage? Um, Can somebody remind me the <coughs> confidence interval formula? Well, give me any confidence interval formula you remember. I'll take it. What you got? I get one started. X bar. Plus or minus? Z. Z. Zero degrees. Sigma. All right, because Z goes to sigma. Are you with me? Then we have a T one. I don't care about that at the moment. You'll see why in a minute. Then we have this one. Why are there P hats in that statement? What what situation are we in there? Do we know the actual population percentage? If I did, why the shit would be trying to make a confidence interval to determine what it could be, right? When do here's another question we talked about before. If I know both sigma and S. Which one do I use? Always. Sigma. Shit, yeah, because what's S trying to do? Cover. It's trying to approximate sigma. <laughs> so if I got sigma, why would I need the approximation? Yeah. What's P hat trying to do for P? What is P hat? What does that mean? P hat. Probability. Probability. probability, what kind of probability? Of, of a what? Sample, thank you. That's why it's got a little hat on it, dude, right? X with a bar on the head. That's the sample mean, right? P hat is the sample percentage. So what's P? That's a population percentage. Are you with me? All right. Okay, so we only use P hat and Q hat when I don't know P and Q. Is everybody with me? Just the same way I would not use S if I knew sigma. No way. That's why I love the book it gives you some problems where you know both. So screw S. Use sigma whenever the hell you know it. What is this again? No, no, no. What? What is this? Eric. No, no, no. I didn't. I didn't circle the Z. Oh, yeah, that's that's sigma x bar, right? The standard deviation of groups, correct? What must this be then? Standard deviation of a group. For percentages, correct? You guys sort of with me still? It's in the same exact place in the formula that's supposed to accomplish the same kind of thing. So it must represent something similar to that. In fact, we built that off of the square root of NPQ. I don't know if you guys remember that, which was the standard deviation, right? You guys sort of with me. Now again, just to remind you guys, we're currently in the derivation process, right? I'm deriving the Z star formula for percentages. We don't know that shit yet. All we know is this dude, become a star. Is that cool? Yes? That's what we keep using for hypothesis tests is that one. But see, that one works for means. So the way it's going to work now is for percentages, what go, what's here is always going to be our data, right? Our data. Down here, it's our time. So P hat minus the supposed population thing. That'll be P. Same idea. How far away is what we saw from what the supposed mean or the middle is, right? Divided by the spread. But what are we going to use now? We're going to use this dude. But we're going to write it like this because, in this case, we're going to assume we know what P is. I don't need the hatted ones, which I still think is a pretty good band name. You know, the hatted ones. And none of them wear hats on. Or not. I don't care. I really want this to make some sense. So what we just did, do you see how this is here? Because it is the spread for this situation, so of course that's what I'm going to use to calculate a z-score. I want a z-score for a percentage now. What's the spread for that situation? 
the thing that's in the same place because it must mean the same thing. Because what's z-score mean again? What's the z-score mean again? Oh shit. The number of the number of standard deviations from the, the middle to whatever data point, right? So that's the number. Oh, this must be standard deviation. That's what that must be. So that's what we're going to divide by. So in step four, in a hypothesis test, instead of this formula, we're going to use this formula. How do you know when to do that? When you got freaking percentages, right? You guys kind of with me? Okay, maybe. All right, let's try a problem out. And there's a couple of the places where things change a little bit. Real quick, I might as well ask you this. What's step two in a hypothesis test? Step one is the hypotheses themselves. What's step two? Yeah, Z T or nothing, right? So what's gotta be true? If I don't say it's normal, what has to be true? And greater than 30? For percentages, what do I check? Not n greater than 30, it's got nothing to do with it. What do I check for percentages? Do you guys remember? Something like that. So it's NP. So before it was NP hat, NQ hat, create equal to five, right? Now it's gonna be, so step two is gonna be NP, NQ, create equal to five. I don't even, it's too weird. All right, let's try problem out. We'll try problem out. Since everybody loves my writing, I'm gonna write the problem out. It's gonna be awesome. So let's say the percentage of households that gave out candy in the years prior was uh, 42%. We think it's the same for this hall. We sample, oh boy, it's an approximation of English. We sample, uh, how many, Jeff? Do it. Uh, <laughs> 218 households. Find, oh shit, now I gotta make something that makes sense. Hold on. No shit, no shit, no shit. Sure, uh, and find, you can do it, Jeff. Yeah, all right, let's just say find 81 uh, that gave out candy. Test the claim. Alpha equal to point one up. No. Yes. There you go. Good job. Okay. Making shit up on the fly. Do it live. Hmm. So first question I got for you. Here's one nice thing I want to point out really quickly. Um, this could be good. This could be bad. But this has got to be good. All five steps are really the same. You still got to tell me the hypothesis. You got to tell me if you can use a z score or not. You still got to uh, set up the rejection region. You still got to get a z star, and you still got to give me a conclusion. All the same steps. What we saw earlier is that some of the steps need different formulas and different checks because now we got freaking percentages, right? But the steps are the same. What's the claim somebody's making in this problem? Yeah, the claim is. Very specifically, we think it was the same now. Or it is the same. You can do it, Jeff. Grammar. So hard. We think it is the same now, correct? So our claim is the percentage is still 0.42. Is that cool? Is that going to be the null or the alternate? Yeah, why would it be the null? It's the most equal you can have. So remember, if it's got an equal sign, it's the null. It's got an actual equal sign that's different. 
and so I still know the outer field. What's the alternate going to be? Not equal to, not equal to. Yeah, not equal to. Now real quick, we used to use this symbol. We used to use that symbol. It's actually two symbols. Because how can you be not equal to something? You can be bigger or small, yeah. And how can you be not the same age as somebody else? You can be younger or older, correct? Same idea. That's why it's going to be a two-tail. The only time you have a two-tail test is that this is not equal to. Because there's two ways you can be not equal to something, more or less, right? So this is a two-tail, two-tail test. Is that alliteration? All right. Can you guys do the next step? What's the next step? By the way, do you guys remember from confidence intervals how many confidence interval formulas were there for percentages? There's x bar plus or minus z, blah, 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 x bar plus or minus t, blah, and then there's p hat plus or minus z. That's it. Do you remember that? So with percentage problems, it's z or nothing. Yeah. Oh, uh, let me ask you real quick. Let me just ask you directly. If we think it's the same, how could you prove us wrong? And how could it be not the same? Or, two tail. Which direction does evidence show up? Either direction, right? We didn't say we think it's increased. We didn't think we said we think it's gone down. There's no directional word there, right? Either direction will show evidence against this. Two tape. Let me stop for a minute. You guys doing all right? Two. So what about the next step? I got to check to see if it's normal. So for percentage problems, it's either normal and you can do z-scores, or it's not normal and you can't do shit, at least in stats one. So what do I have to check? Yeah, what's N? 218. So 218, then what's P? Shouldn't be doing any work. Yeah, P is 0.42. We're going to assume this is true. That's the whole idea of hypothesis test is let's assume this is true and then see if we can find something that contradicts that. So you guys do that for me. What's Q? 0.58. 0.58. So one minus this. Ninety one point five six. Ninety one point five six. Okay. Ninety one point five six. Those are both at least five. What does that mean? Normal enough. Normal enough. All right. So we're allowed to do something. If either one of those was less than five, or both were less than five, you cannot do anything. Bless you. What if it's a five? It's more? Equal to, greater than equal to. So if it was oh. equal to five, we're golden. Okay. What's the next step? Yeah. So, yeah, rejection region, right? So you have to know how many tail test, what's alpha, is it Z? Well, in this case, it's always Z or nothing, right? So. I know alpha is 0.10. I know it's a two-tailed test. Don't say anything. Take a minute to look it up. Don't say anything. 0.10 two-tailed test. Don't say anything. using the t-chart right two tail 0.10 so which column are you looking in fourth one I like it so if you go all the way down what do you got well, there'll be negative one six four five and positive one six four five right for both directions so 
So it's a little weird. When I say the rejection region, there's actually two parts to it. Is that right? Um, and you always go at the end because yeah. Um, What's at the very bottom of the T score chart? The C score. Yeah. Z scores. Yeah. But let's say if we had an N or something like that. We'd... We have an N. Don't we have an N? So why didn't we stop at two seventeen or two hundred? Well, no, because we never use T-scores for percentage bumps. We're not using a T-score, so we don't stop. If you stop, you get a T-score. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you get a Z-score. And we know we want to use Z. Okay. T-scores were invented specifically to work with means. Yeah. You may have. One reason... I want this to make sense. Part of it is because when I have means, I can either have the standard deviation of the population or I can have the standard deviation of the sample, correct? With percentages, I always make my own standard deviation. So that's part of the reason why we don't use T scores with percentage bumps. But we look at the T chart. Because Z scores live on it. Yeah. I really don't want that to be an issue. At the bottom, in fact, it's even just reinforcing what T-scores do. The smaller my sample is, the more help I need from T-scores to cover my ass <laughs> for stuff I don't know. The bigger my sample gets, the less I need them until my sample is so large that I don't need them anymore. And that's why the Z-scores live at the bottom. That's what the T-scores become. Okay. So how do I say this in words? How do we get to this little dude here? How do we get down there? If Z star is. How do we get down there? Less than. Less than. Negative. Or Z star is. Greater than. Positive. What can we do? You gotta love the name of the damn thing, right? Rejection region. So if you get in there, you can reject. No. So for. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, I like it. So now, so all the same steps. Use the symbol P because it's percentages, right? Uh, you got to use the check for percentages for part B. Uh, this step is exactly the freaking same, right? This step. It's actually nicer because it's never going to be a T. What's the next step? Yeah, we set up where evidence starts. We set up where our sample's got to get. So it kind of makes sense the very next step should be where did our sample get, right? Did it make it far enough away? So the next step is sample information. So what does P have? Probability of the sample. I mean, I want the number. I want to know what the hell the number is. I don't want a definition. <laughs> Say again. How'd you get that? That's what now? Sorry. No, 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 no. What did we see in our sample? Let me start there. Oh, it's 81 divided by 280. Yeah, we saw 81 said yes out of 218, right? Mm -hmm. That's what P hat always is. So I look at my sample. The way we say it in English is the way we do it in mathish. 81 out of 218 said yes. Okay, so 81 divided by 218, what is that? 0.3786. I like it. 0.6284. Do I care about Q hat? I do, but in this case, no, we don't give a shit. Yeah, Q hat, we don't give a shit. Because what are we assuming? We're assuming we know P. I really want this. So the formula is, we just came up with it earlier. Why does the top of this make stupid amount of sense? So we have 0.42 is what we're fighting against, correct? That's what HA is fighting against, right? So I want, it, I want it to be different. It's got to be different enough. So of course what's going to show up in the formula, how different are my percentage from the sample and 
So of course the damn thing is going to be our percentage minus 0.42. That, of course that's going to be a part of it. I want to see how far apart those suckers are. But what measures distance, of course, in statistics? Z-score, but it uses standard deviations, right? So I'm going to divide by the standard deviation. I want to know how many standard deviations apart are these things. Is it relatively far apart? I don't know. <laughs> I made this shit up. I don't know what the answer is. So what is our p hat? 372. Chinsy bastard, sorry. 0.42 divided by square root. And here's where everybody's going to make mistakes. What goes inside that square root on the bottom? 0.42. Yeah, p. 0.42 times q. 0.58 divided by n. 18. The other mistake is I see 81 sneaks in there, but the n is always the bigger one. It's a total number, right? So when you go to plug that in your calculator, one immediate thing you want to do, your poor little calculator, thank God, because this would be weird as shit. It does not have eyeballs, right? So you have to tell it in your calculator, that's the top, right? <coughs> and then when you do divide by square root, you do not want to come out of the square root until you get all this in there. You guys understand? So let's see if we get the same answer. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Give the person a chance, man. Alright, now I'll take it. What do you guys get? 1.45. I got. I got negative I got a negative four, three. Four, five, nine. Oh, negative you got negative one, four, three, five, nine, blah, blah. Four, four, <laughs> to negative 1.44. Did anybody else get something different? You count it from if you get negative 1.45? Sing it. You count it from if you get negative 1.45? Yeah. What was the thing you saw? No, let, me, let me see. Here, let me show you what I did. sucks in mathematics is it's so easy to transpose numbers. So as long as you show me your work, I can pick up on those kind of things and take a lot less points off. Can you guys all see? That works with the glare too. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Really. You just put the math in your brains. Okay. All right. So there. Negative 1.44, is that right? All right. So, and, so again, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Especially if you show me the work. If you got the formula set up right, and something goes freaky in your calculator, as long as you show me the formula, I'm not going to take off anywhere near as many points. Um, okay, so can somebody tell me, do we have the answer to this hypothesis test thing? Did we make it far enough away? If only we had something that told us how far we had to make it. Did we make it far enough away? No, no we didn't. It's right here. We made it to negative 144. So what do we do? Can we reject an all? No. Nope. So, so what do we do? Fail to reject an all. So we can immediately write this. Fail to reject no, fail to support the ha. Is that cool?
stop for a minute. So there's a little bit of an add-on. Does anyone remember how to get the p-value? Last time I showed you some p-values in the wild. Anytime you see a statistical paper or analysis, you're going to see p-values down there. The smaller the p-value, the more evidence there was for that thing. The bigger, the less evidence there was. Why is there no alpha? Because you make up your own freaking alpha. They just give you what the shit they saw, right? Um, we didn't make it far enough away. We failed to reject it, but what is the p-value? Well, let me ask you this question. What is the area in this tail? That's a chapter six question. <coughs> huh? What's the area in the tail that our z-score made? What's the area in the tail that our Z star made? Look up negative 1.44. All right, let me push you guys. Is that the p-value? Not yet. How many tail tests was this? So what do I have to do to this? If this is a, if this is a one tail test, this would be the p-value. This is a two tail test, so I have to double this. Yes? It's uh, 0.079. 4.9? All right. I crowdsourced that. Is it 4.9? Oh, 7.0.0749? Okay. So what's twice that? Yeah. 1.498. All right. Let me stop for a minute. That tells me there was about a 15% chance that the mean, that I would get a sample where I did if this really was where the percentage, what the real percentage is. So it's not unlikely enough to reject the null. You all agree with me that our sample is relatively decently far away. It's almost a step and a half away, which is more far away than the average data point is but it's not far enough away to show evidence. It's exactly where uh, sample variability would say it should show up if that really was the real percentage in the middle, 0.42. All right, so what's our conclusion gonna be? What language do I wanna use over there? Well, what was the claim? The claim is the first thing you care about and it's the last thing you care about. What was the claim? Which one? So which one? The H O. Right. What's your problem? No. So, so I want to use. This is what I desperately want you guys to realize. There's not a 50/50 chance. You don't just say something and hope. You freaking use the language that talks about the claim. So screw that language. I'm going to use this language because the claim was the null. Yeah. Circle it for yourself. Fail translates into what? Did we find evidence? Nope, we failed. We have not found sufficient evidence sub f to what? To support. To ah. fail to reject. To reject. Yes. That was a reaction. And again, just if you just take a second, what's the claim? Circle that shit. Cross through the other shit. You know exactly how to word this. And doesn't this make sense? Did we make it far enough to where we rejected? No. So we have not found sufficient evidence to reject it. Reject the claim that what? The percent of households that gave out candy. Yeah. The percent of households that gave out candy is 42%. Or you could say, that the percent of households that gave out candy it is the same as it was. Right, there's a few different ways to word this, right? Okay. So real quick, which one was our claim again? The null. Are we happy or sad about the results? This is a weird question because it's not really how science works, but if that's our claim, are we happy or sad about the results? If our claim was the null, did we want to reject it? We would have been sad if we would have, right? Sort of. Mm -hmm. We failed to reject the damn thing. 
Do you, do you get that? So that was the question I had in my other class was, well, how do we feel about it? All right, well, you know, in science, if I have a claim and I do a test and it proves me wrong, that just makes me more excited. I'm like, sweet, I don't know what the hell's going on. That's fantastic, I gotta do more, you know? It's almost great to be proven wrong in science. And sorry, Paul's side note. All right, so look at how much time we got. So you get to do a problem on your own. So I'm gonna write it up here. Now real quick, I saw somebody react violently to this <laughs> just now. Not violently. You should be like, please give me shit to do that you're not gonna grade me on, Jeff. That'd be awesome, so you're welcome. Okay. <coughs> Here we go. Unless you could be reacting to having to read my writing. That part I understand. Um, all right, so let's say, oh, um, last year, We feel that that percentage has gone up. Let's pretend like it's the end of the semester. Um, from a sample of um, let's say for the whole year, it doesn't matter. From a sample of 132 students, we find. What Jeff? What what Jeff? I don't know. Um, be quiet. Uh, Ninety uh, nine. Yeah. Test the claim. Using alpha equal to point oh one. What does it say after we feel that percentage? We feel that that percentage has gone up. Oh. So you gotta love English. That, that. The word that. God, I'm a geek. I came up with a situation where saying that, 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 that actually made sense. So the word that's kind of weird. So we just feel the percentage has gone up from 68%, right? So go for it, you can work with other people near you. Call me over if you need help. I'll leave the other steps up here. Let me erase some of this so it doesn't freak you out. All right, guys, I'm going to catch up to you. What is the claim in Mathish? Yeah, we think it's gone up from 68, so greater than 0.68. Always make percentages into decimals immediately so you don't make any mistakes. So where does that go? On the ha. Because it's, it doesn't have an equal sign, so it goes here, yeah, there. So what goes here? Opposite. Opposite. So how many tail tests was it going to be? One. How do you know it's one tail test? Because you're only looking at the greater, like the. Yeah. The only way to show evidence if I find something that's bigger than 0.68. If I find something less, then I'm screwed. So it's only one tail. It's one direction that will show evidence. Right? Okay. Nothing to do with the band.
And then, so here, this is just plug and chug shit. What's N? 132. 132. P. 6.68. 0.68. 89.76. Yeah. So what is it? 89.76. 86. And 42.24. 42.24. Yeah. All right, what does that mean? Normal enough. Normal enough. Okay. So that means I can use Z score. So it's either Z or nothing. And normally I'm kind of nice on a test. I'll actually say Z or nothing. You never know me. Future Jeff, he could be a complete jackass. So you gotta, you only ever use these scores. The P's, how do you tell? You're gonna have formulas that have X bar with Z, X bar with T, but P hat only with frickin' Z. It's telling you, you only use these scores with percentages. Okay. Alpha is 0.01, one tail test. Look at the one tail row, which is the top row. You find 0.01, and you go uh, all the way down. 2.326? Yeah. And of course it's going to be... Yeah. So how do we get in here if Z star is greater than 2326? That is evidence against the one who thinks it should be in here. And that is always the null because of how we set this up. So we reject. So if I get in there, I reject the null. Support. So ha ha ha. All right. What'd you guys get for p hat? How'd you calculate it? Uh, ninety nine over one thirty two. Yeah, ninety nine divided by one thirty two. What do you get? Point seventy five. Yeah. Crazy. I just made that shit up and it came out so nice. <coughs> so it would be our data minus the supposed middle divided by this crazy ass square root of business. So there's like calc errors, there's people that put the right number there, there's people that don't make the square root big enough or they make too many square roots or all kinds of things. But if you just write down what you're doing, you'll always get a few more points. If you don't write down what you're doing, I gotta assume the worst. So when you put that in your calculator, what do you get, sorry? 1.72. 1.72. 72. 72? 75? What, 724. 724? Okay, sure. So 172 is when you're just crowdsourcing this, so hey. Huh? No. Positive, yeah. So, we already know the answer again, don't we? Do we make it far enough away? No. No, we did nothing but fail today. Damn. We're getting out of our system. So we have, oh, sorry. We give Ryan immediately fail to reject the null, fail to support the ha. Which one was the claim? Ha. So I'm going to use this language, not that language. So fail translates into, we have not found sufficient evidence to. Support. <coughs> support the claim that. The, the percentage of stat students passing has gone up. Oh my god, okay. So much writing. Stats is like English plus math. It's like, oh my goodness. Nothing wrong with English. My English compatriots, you're fine. So I'll tell you this. I already said this to my other class. Uh, 10.2, <coughs> extra credit. You can do it or not. If you do it, I'll add a little bit onto your homework average. So you could end up with a more than 100% homework average if you do that plus all the homework. Or it could take the place of something, right? That's for 10 points. I'm going to talk about it a little bit on Wednesday because I'm going to have one bonus question from section 10.2 on the test for those people that actually tried. All right, otherwise, we're done with chapter nine.
Everybody's got a practice test, right? So I'll have the quizzes graded, and I'll have the answer key to the practice test. Somehow, future Jeff is going to do that. He's going to do great. See you guys. Don't forget your stuff, please. Oh, it's all about, see how this guy's pointing in a direction? One tail up that one. If it's not equal to, it's not directional, that means either way works. Cool. Come on.